last lesson we started to work out the chords to go together with the arpeggios in this exercise. And we got as far as D before I left you to work out the rest for yourself. So just to recap, against the uh, arpeggios round the circle of fourths, which went something like this, E, E major seventh, E dominant seventh, E sixth, up to A, major, major seventh, dominant seventh, sixth, down to D, major, major seventh, and so on. We worked out the chords E major, E major seventh, E dominant seventh, E sixth, a major, A major seventh, A seventh, A sixth, and D major, major seventh, dominant seventh, and sixth. The next group of chords in this series are based on G, the fourth in the key of D. So for G, I choose to work on this top uh, root note here, 3rd fret on the top string. So for G major we keep that there, for G major 7th we take it down to there, down a fret, and then for G 7th down to there, and for G 6th open it. So that's simply of G, we go up to C as the fourth. So for the C major chord, we can start operating on this note here, C major, open it for C major 7, but then we run out of notes on this string, and we haven't this time got the option of going up an octave, because there just isn't enough guitar. So. Uh, Instead of going up, we think on downwards, and what we do is we replace uh, the fifth in the chord, is that open G at the moment, with that note which is a flat seventh. So that gives us uh, C seventh, or C dominant seventh, and then we can take that note on down to there to give us C sixth. So that was C major, major 7th, dominant 7th, 6th. The next chord is F, where again the first couple of chords are no problem. So we've worked on this as our top root note and just simply opening it to give us F major 7th. But for the dominant 7th, we've again run out of space on this string, and similarly with the C series, we're going to continue on down this string instead. So we sacrifice our 5th, which was a C here, and we replace it with this flatted 7th note here which we can play with our pinky and then the first finger can just shift back across to hold the root, top root note down on the top string there. So that's our F dominant 7th and then it's a simple matter to run that pinky down one more fret to give us F6. So our F series all together. I wonder if that matches more or less what you came up with after the last lesson. Do let me know if you worked out any alternative fingerings. From there on we have to resort to movable shapes and for B flat which is our next note, the fourth in the key of F, 
um, I tend to resort to the E string rooted shape. So two sets of choices really here. You can either use complete six string bar chords and we just sort of run this note down to make the uh, major seventh like that and then the seventh and the sixth um, but I prefer to use four string shapes so I use this version of the bar chord where I'm muting the fifth string out that's dead and just putting these three in a row like that particularly good for finger style and then we just run this note down for the major seventh and then the seventh and swap these two fingers to get our major sixth so that's all together major Major 7th, dominant 7th, 6th. So next in the circle of fourths after B flat is E flat. And for that we simply use the A string A shape series of chords. So that's E flat major. And we take this root note down one step to give us E flat major 7th, one more step to give us dominant 7th and then we can revert to this shape uh, to give us the 6th. Alternatively for the dominant 7th and the 6th you can switch to using the C shapes here and we're rooted in this diagonal now so that's um, flat major, E flat major 7th, E flat dominant 7th, E flat 6th. Some ways that's easier to finger and a bit less trebly sounding. We then carry on round our circle of fourths and we jump back down to the E string root for the A flat series. Back up to the A string root at the same fret for our D flat series. Back to our E string root for the F sharp series. And finally back across to the A string for our B series. which of course takes us full circle. So that concludes the explanation of both halves of this exercise. And actually a lot of the benefit from this comes from working out the chord shapes and relating them to the way the arpeggio patterns work and the way they sound. To reinforce this I've made a special backing track which is available free to download from the Secret Guitar Teacher site. The track starts with a two bar counting. It's in 6-8 time so count it as one and a two and a one and a two and a one and a two and a so you then start playing your arpeggios against me playing the chords on the backing track. Back to the beginning of the series again, starting with E. 
but this time we swap roles. On the track you'll hear me playing the arpeggio patterns, leaving you to play the corresponding chords. So you'll be playing these arpeggios over me playing the chords in the backing. And we're just coming towards the end. lesson we'll start looking at the corresponding minor side to this exercise. If you found this little lesson interesting please do click on the like button if there is one or leave a comment and do feel free to share the video with your friends. And if you'd like to gain full access to all our guitar teaching materials please visit the Secret Guitar Teacher site and take a free look round at what's available there. See you again soon.